Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created in Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on creating our initial world scene, and we started to create our base player and character classes uh, that we'll use for adding our player to our scene. If you missed the previous videos, there'll be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the source code for this video. There'll also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so now that we have our initial world scene and we have our player game object, what we want to do next is update our world scene to handle player input. And then that way, as the user interacts with their keyboard, presses the arrow keys, we're going to move our game object around our scene. And then later on, as we have interactive objects and NPCs, the player will be able to interact with them. So to do this, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to make a new uh, controls class. And this controls class is going to abstract away a lot of the logic we added in our battle scene uh, for handling player input. And then that way we can reuse this across our various scenes in our game. So to do this, let's go ahead and make a new class. Uh, so we're going to go into our utils folder. And we're going to call this controls.js. And what we'll do is we're just going to export class and we're going to call this controls and we'll have our constructor and we're going to expect the phaser scene uh, as our only uh, parameter. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and add that protected property to our class. It'll be a phaser scene. So then in our constructor, let's go ahead and assign our property to our scene. And then what we're going to do in our class is we're going to go ahead and create an instance of our phaser uh, cursor keys. And then we'll go ahead and store a reference on our class. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll pop open to our battle scene. And we're going to go ahead and copy our code for creating our cursor keys. Uh, let's add that to our constructor. Then let's go ahead and copy our property. Uh, so we'll have our cursor keys. And we'll add that below our scene. And then what we need to do is not doing this input. We want to do this scene input, keyboard, create cursor keys. And then finally, we're going to add one more property, and this is going to be for locking player input. And so this property is going to be used for knowing uh, if we shouldn't allow and handle player input of certain types. A good example of this is uh, like if there's a cut scene and we don't want to be skippable, uh, if there's player input, we don't want to process that like normal. And so what we'll do is we're going to do lock, player input and we'll go ahead and make that a boolean so let's copy our type and let's update that and then what we'll do is in our constructor let's go ahead and assign a default value and we're going to set that equal to false all right so then what we're going to do is now we're going to add some utility methods that are going to wrap some of our logic that we we're doing before uh, so if we come to our update method in our battle scene and so we're currently checking to see if our space key was pressed, if our back key was pressed, or if an arrow key was pressed. And so these are good candidates for our methods that we want to create. Uh, so what we're going to do is in our controls.js file, let's go ahead and add in three new methods. We're going to do was space key pressed. And this is going to return a Boolean. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to return false. And let's just copy this. And we're going to do was back key pressed. And then what we'll do is we're going to do get direction key pressed down. And so for was space key pressed, this is where we're going to check to see if our space key was uh, pushed. So we're going to go ahead and come into our logic where we do our was space key check. And so we're just going to copy this. We'll come to our controls and we're going to go ahead and return that and then what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure our cursor keys are defined so if our cursor keys are undefined then what we'll do is we're just going to go ahead and return false as a default value and then we'll do the same thing for our back key and for our get direction key press down and so if our back key was pressed, what we want to do is we want to check to see if our shift key was pressed. And then for our get direction key pressed down, we don't actually want to return a Boolean for this method. Instead, what we want to do is return one of our directions. And so we're going to do direction dot none if our cursor keys are not defined. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to copy our logic that we currently have for our selected direction. Uh, so we're going to copy this here, 
and we're going to go ahead and come down here. Let's go ahead and paste that. And then we're going to go ahead and return our selected direction. All right, so one last thing we're going to do in our controls class is we're going to go ahead and add uh, getter and setter uh, for updating our locking of player input. Uh, so let's come down below our constructor and let's add a new getter. So we're going to do get is input locked. And all we're going to do here is return this lock player input. And then for our setter, we're going to do set lock input. We'll receive one parameter. Uh, this will be our value. And what we'll do is we'll do this. We're going to lock our player input and we're going to assign it to the value that we receive. All right, so now that we have our new controls class, what we're going to do is we're going to update our world scene to create an instance of it. And then that way we can pass our input to our character class. So let's come into our world scene. Let's add a new property and we're going to call this controls. And let's go ahead and add in our type. And this is going to be controls. And then what we'll do is after we create our player, let's go ahead and create our controls instance. So I'm going to do new controls and we're going to pass in this for our current phaser scene. Then we'll add in our update method. And so here, this is where we're going to check for our input, similar to like what we did before in our battle scene. But now we'll use our controls class to go ahead and do this. So what we're going to do, we're going to do const, we'll do our selected direction, and we're going to check our controls, and we'll get the direction key pressed down. And then what we're going to do is if it's not equal to none, um, that means we have some type of input to process. We're going to do direction dot none. Then we want to go ahead and move our character. So what we're going to do is we're going to reference our player. And now we need to create a new method for moving our character. So we're just going to call this move character and we'll pass in our selected direction. And then what we're going to do is come into our character class. And let's go ahead and add in this new public method. So we're going to have move character and we'll have direction for our parameter. And then what we'll do inside here is we're going to go ahead and move our character uh, one space over in our grid. Uh, so this is going to be where we update our X and Y values uh, by one. And then we just need to multiply that by our tile size, uh, similar to when we set our original game object. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and add in a switch statement. And we're going to go ahead and go through our direction. And then we just need to add in our cases. So we'll have our case. We'll have direction dot down. We'll add our break statement. Let's copy this and we'll do our other directions. Uh, so then we'll have up, left, and right. And then finally we'll have none. And then we'll have our default. And for our default, we'll do our exhaustive guard. And let's go ahead and pass in direction. And we'll go ahead and save. All right, so real quick, let's go ahead and add in our type. So if we can open up our battle menu class, let's copy one of our params where we have our direction. We're going to paste that above our move character. And then we just need to go ahead and update our reference. All right, and then all we need to do now is actually update our game object. So we're going to do our phaser game object, and we'll do our Y position. And so if we're pressing the down key, we want to increment by our tile size. And so right now... We have our tile size defined in our world scene. What we're going to do is we're going to move this to our config file. And then that way we can reference it in multiple locations. And so we'll do export const tile size. Then in our world scene, let's add in our import. And in our character class, let's go ahead and add in that import. And then what we can do is copy this line here. And we can go ahead and paste it. And let's do, we're going to decrement if we're going up and then if we're going left we'll decrement but it'll be our x property and then for right we'll increment and it'll be our x property all right and then we just need to fix our import and our controls file all right and so real quick what we're doing is on our world scene we have a new instance of our controls class and with our controls class we're checking for input if one of our keys is being pressed down so if it's being held down and if it is, then we're going to go ahead and move our character. And so 
for the time being, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and just have some simple uh, movement just to make sure our input's working correctly and we can move our game object around our scene. And because uh, later on, what we'll want to do is we want to actually go ahead and move our player and lock it to our grid. And so we'll have grid based movement. And then that way, our player can only move into our grid spaces. They wouldn't be able to move uh, to any position they actually want. And so for the time being, what we're doing is we're just going to increment our uh, X and Y values manually um, based on if that key is pressed. And so if we go ahead and save, we should be able to test our changes in our scene. However, we have this effect where our player actually zooms around our screen if that key is being held because we're just constantly updating our value. Instead, what we want to do is we just want to check if our key has been pressed, if so, process at one time and then stop until that key is released and pressed again. Um, and this will just be for this basic input. And so to support that, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new method to our controls uh, class. And so this method is going to be very similar to our get direction key pressed down. Instead, though, we're just going to check if it's pressed one time. Uh, so let's copy this logic here. Let's go ahead and add in our new method. And we're going to call this get direction key just pressed. And so for this, what we want to do is we don't want to do check if is down. Instead, we want to use just down. Uh, similar to like what we do when we check for our space and our shift keys. So we're just going to copy this here. Let's come down to our if statement. So instead of our left, we'll do our phaser input just down. We'll do our cursor keys. And then we'll go ahead and do left. And then for our other if statements, we just need a similar check. Uh, so we'll change this here and we'll do right. And here we'll do up. And then finally, we're going to do down. And then what we should be able to do is if we come back to our world scene. Let's go ahead and change this to get direction key just pressed. And now if we come to our scene and test. If we press right and we hold the key, nothing, our character will stop moving. But if we lift up and press again, then our character is going to move by one grid space. All right, and so this is much better for the time being. Uh, but like I said, we're going to go ahead and enhance our input to actually have animations and to have our characters have a smooth transition between the grid spaces. All right, so the last thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're actually going to update our battle scene to use our new controls instance. And so this will be a good test to make sure everything's still working uh, properly and that our controls class has all the functionality we need. So if we come into our battle scene, let's go to where we create our cursor keys property. And what we're going to do is just going to copy this from our world scene. And instead of cursor keys, we're going to create controls. And we need to go ahead and import in our class. Then what we'll do is we'll come to our constructor where we... Then what we'll do is we'll come to our create method where we create our cursor keys and instead we'll create our controls. And now when we want to do our West space key pressed, we're going to reference our controls. So we're going to do this. We'll have controls and we'll do was space key pressed. And we're going to copy this and come down to where we do our back and where we do our back check for our shift. And so we're going to replace this with was back key pressed. And then finally, for our selected direction, we're going to go into our world scene. Let's copy this logic here. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and paste it. And this just replaces this whole block of code here. And we'll go ahead and save. Now let's go ahead and test our changes to validate. So if we jump over to preload scene, we'll come to the bottom and we're going to update this to go back to our battle scene. And so now our animations will play. Press the space key, we process our input. And now, if we go ahead and move our arrow key, we go ahead and navigate our menus like we expect. And same thing with our attacks, and we can go ahead and go ahead and do our attack. And then the last thing to test is on our fight menu. If we try going back, that works too. All right, so then back in our preload scene, let's switch this back to our world scene. All right, with that, that actually brings this video to an end. In our next video, we'll continue working on our player input, and we're going to work on adding our grid-based movement for our player. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to complete source code for this video. 
And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.